the International River Foundation is committed to the protection, restoration and the sustainable management of the world's rivers. The River Foundation recognizes excellence in sustainable river basin management and encourages all river managers to learn from the achievements of our growing global network of River Prize alumni. The Tees International River Prize is the world's most prestigious environmental prize, awarding $350,000 to the prize winner. The International River Foundation would like to take this opportunity to thank the Tees family, Alec and Mary Peden, and the Queensland Government for their continued support and valued contribution in 2012. To assist the sharing of knowledge amongst a global community of practitioners, the 2012 TEAS International River Prize includes a $100,000 grant to support the winner in their chosen twinning endeavour. This year's international finalists hail from diverse corners of the globe and have demonstrated persistence in overcoming challenges, considerable engagement with both local and global communities, and importantly, highlight both the achievements of river restoration and the importance in protection of pristine rivers before they succumb to degradation. The 2012 Tees International River Prize finalists are Nushagak River, Alaska, USA. The Nushagak Malchatna Watershed Council was formed in 2000 to provide an umbrella for organizations concerned about the future of the Nushagak River in remote southwestern Alaska. The council was recently renamed the Bristol Bay Heritage Land Trust. It remains an unincorporated association of Alaska Native Tribal Organizations, Municipal Governments, Alaska Native Landowning Businesses and Conservation Groups. The Land Trust nominated the Nushagak River for the River Prize to bring global recognition to an effort largely driven by the local indigenous Yupik Eskimo population to protect a river that has supported them for thousands of years. The Nushagak River watershed is pristine and ecologically intact. It provides minimally disturbed habitat for a variety of species including moose, caribou, brown and black bear, 150 species of birds and numerous fish species of which Pacific salmon are the most important globally. Approximately 25% of the world's sockeye salmon spawn in this watershed. These species continue to support an indigenous hunting and gathering society of Yupik Eskimos who have lived in the watershed for at least 5,000 years. The salmon form the foundation of a local commercial fishing economy which started in 1884 and is still thriving. Unlike most of the rivers that have received the River Prize, the Nushagak is pristine and the effort we wanted to recognize with the River Prize is not one of restoration or revival, but one directed to avoiding the kind of impacts that lead to the need for restoration and revival. I believe recognition is particularly appropriate because these Yupik people know the value of their river to the world. During the last 40 years, the Nushagak River watershed has become legally fragmented. Ownership and management of land and water within the watershed has been apportioned among federal, state and municipal governments, native tribal corporations and individual private owners. The organizations that associate through the council are working together to support an integrated approach to conserve habitat and biodiversity. The council has initiated scientific studies, educational programs and cooperative planning and management efforts to protect the Nushagak from the fate of so many rivers, particularly the other great salmon rivers of the world. Okavango River, Angola, Botswana and Namibia. The Kubango Okavango River system in Africa, flowing 1,000 kilometers from Angola through Namibia to Botswana, is one of the few relatively undeveloped river systems in the world and a natural wonder in a dry region. The basin is internationally important for its biodiversity and biological production, with the Okavango Delta, one of the world's largest Ramsar sites, its best known feature. The basin has a national, regional and global environmental value, evident in its popularity as an ecotourism destination. But people living in the river basin are poorer than others in the region, 
and demand for water to support growing populations and development is steadily increasing. In its present near pristine state, the river provides significant ecosystem benefits and will continue to do so if managed appropriately. We want to highlight the need to restore damaged rivers and create a global blueprint for fair and responsible management of wetlands like ours that are still pristine. The three riparian states' commitment to developing a joint cooperative management regime for sustainable development and management of the basin was expressed through establishment of the permanent Okavango River Basin Water Commission, OCACOM, in 1994 to provide technical advice about conservation, development and utilization of water resources of common interest. It was a great challenge to bring together three countries with such a very different governance structures, cultures, language and needs. The shared vision of the state is to anticipate and reduce unintended, unacceptable and unnecessary impacts to the resources of the Okavango Basin System. The first such organization established in the region, OCACOM, has come to be recognized for its independent thinking and committed ownership of decision making. The scientific assessment of the river and its people was highly successful and is now informing negotiations between Angola, Botswana and Namibia on how to share the benefits of the river in a basin-wide sustainable way. To effectively implement its mandate, OCACOM has actively invested in developing a sound knowledge base on which to base its decisions and on operational structures that ensure its effectiveness. Prespa Lakes, Greece Lake Mikri Prespa, situated in the heart of the Balkans, is one of the oldest lakes in Europe. By the early 1990s, the degradation of Mikri Prespa had advanced significantly. Littoral wet meadow areas had considerably dwindled. Populations of water bird species had decreased or stopped nesting, while some fish species populations followed similar decreasing trends. The project refers to the restoration of wet meadows for the conservation of Lake Mikri Prespa, a long-term conservation effort which is today recognized as best practice for an ecosystem's recovery. The tripling of wet meadow areas, the re-nesting of the glossy ibis, and the enlargement by 240% of the colony of the globally endangered Dalmatian pelican, now numbering over 1,200 pairs, 15% of the global population, are among the most outstanding results. The major success of our project is that scientific data on hydrology, species and rangeland ecology among others are coupled with traditional knowledge alongside active stakeholder participation that adds value to wetland conservation. The Society for the Protection of Prespa's strategy was based on the promotion of integrated river basin management by combining traditional practices and scientific knowledge in collaboration with local stakeholders. Both specialists and local societies usually forget that the basin belongs to all people everywhere. We overcame the challenge to combine science with the traditional ecological knowledge of the local society. Conservation practices aimed at the management of both water resources and vegetation included the reconstruction of the sluice that channels the water of Lake Mikri Prespa into Lake Megali Prespa, management of the reeds through cutting and grazing with water buffaloes and cattle, monitoring of the avifauna and vegetation management practices and the elaboration of a five-year management plan. Willamette River, Oregon, USA As the heart of a large, productive river basin in the most populous part of Oregon, USA, the Willamette River faces many threats. Toxic chemicals, high water temperatures, a confined channel, dam-altered flows, loss of floodplain forests, population growth and climate change. But in the past 10 years, there has been a collaborative effort by watershed organizations, land trusts, farmers, cities, state agencies and private foundations to improve the health of the Willamette and its tributaries. These groups are guided by a suite of scientific plans and studies, including the Willamette Restoration Strategy and the Willamette River Basin Planning Atlas, 
that together form a framework for prioritizing and tracking restoration efforts. We entered River Prize this year to shine a light on the great work done by many individuals and organizations who dedicated themselves to improving the health of the Willamette over the years and to also highlight the role, the catalytic role really, that funders can have in advancing this vital work. A new public and private funding partnership between the Maya Memorial Trust, the State of Oregon Watershed Enhancement Board and the Bonville Environmental Foundation is supporting projects to improve channel complexity, increase floodplain river connections and expand floodplain forests and riparian buffers. Four years after this funding partnership began, restoration projects are underway at 15 sites along the mainstream Willamette. These projects encompass over 2,500 acres of land, either undergoing active restoration or set aside for future projects through acquisition and easements. In the Willamette and really throughout Oregon, we're very fortunate to have a network of community-based watershed groups that are able to connect the stakeholders in their watersheds, whether those are farmers or city officials or teachers and students with the rivers or the streams in their own backyard. So the most important thing we can do to advance restoration really is to support those groups uh, in doing their work. On the mainstream Willamette, 12 organizations and more than 20 private landowners are currently engaged in restoration. Projects include invasive species removal, floodplain forest restoration, side channel reconnection, and the removal of dikes and revetments to restore floodplain function. International River Foundation congratulates the 2012 TIS International River Prize finalists. 